First of all, um, I guess I want to thank you uh, from us because we're just trying to work out how to do this, this stuff and we, I think, are really appreciative of the openness and the offers of helping uh, learning the history. Uh, Bob was talking about the, the evolution that occurred through the process of moving from an idea to working with a few people to working with more people to working with a really large number of people with high commercial interests. And I've certainly heard Chris talk before about, uh, yes, we need to get on with it, but we've got to expect we'll get it wrong. So we'll get it less wrong because we've heard from you. And I do want really to first of all say thank you very much for that. The, the next thing I guess I heard was that some of the success criteria were paying attention to the culture of the community within which you worked. So I heard Bob talking about an engineering culture and Scott talking about an engineering culture that was really important in developing a, a, a mechanism that enabled us to succeed in that culture. I think uh, in the context of both Bob and Mustafa, there is a, a context of coming out of Ixu which says uh, that there's a science culture there that's a really important culture that needs to be paid attention to to get it right. Thinking about uh, where RDA goes, we have an interesting challenge because we must pay attention to the research culture. We must pay attention to an engineering culture, to a data technology culture, to a data culture, to a culture of government engagement, a culture of institutional engagement. So how do we pitch this in a way that builds in the strength of the bottom-up approach that has come, uh, that was so evident in all of the discussions, and, and yet on the other hand, there are guiding forces at play that have uh, other particular cultural aspects. So how do we succeed? I guess I, I, I take the uh, quote from Scott uh, really there. How do you succeed? You do it on the basis of desperate need. So I think that's what we ought to be listening to carefully, that we, may, we must make sure that there's a need there that's really been identified that we're going to deliver against, and then the adoption becomes really easy because it's a solution to a problem, uh, as opposed to this is a bad idea, let's try and explore that. So, so I, I took that uh, to heart, really, and, and that we need to really move uh, together we will need to understand what our culture is. Uh, Chris referred to the RDA community. What community are we? Are we a get on with the community? Are we a data community? Are we a technology community? There are, in fact, uh, one of the things very clearly, a broad church in, the, in this context, and we need to think quite hard about how to build an engagement model that works across and does not exclude particular cultures in, in this environment. And one of the things I, I take out of this panel is that you have individual expertise in culture in particular ways that we really need to tap into. So I just really want to thank you very much for that. Um, I, I think the other thing is to say we understand that RDA will only succeed if we can work well with partners uh, with the generosity that they've just offered us. Uh, so we absolutely uh, want to thank you for that. We need to build a mechanism that enables us to interact well with other organisations. Uh, in a little while's time we'll be talking about developing task groups, but in particular I want to emphasise right now that we need to get a group of people thinking about how do we get the best form of engagement with partner organisations. We didn't want to do it uh, and announce that today because we thought it was important to hear first and listen and, and learn, but now we need to get on with it and so we need in the next few months to get in place a structure that enables us to do that. But mainly I want to say thank you. Okay, we have about... Uh
10 minutes or so uh, to see if there are any additional questions or comments, uh, it, it, to have a discussion with the panel. And it's, uh, as uh, Bob said, Larry can fill in for uh, any questions that uh, might come to Bob as well. So let me open the floor up, see if there are any questions. One over here. Jean. Thank you very much. It was great and it was educational. I didn't know a lot about what Cadeta, for example, doing these days, or your organization never heard actually. So it was great. Um, so I represent here DELSA, Data Enabled Life Sciences Alliance. And uh, I see so many convergences and synergies between even people in the committee or people in the audience. Like yesterday, one of your keynote was um, Phil, Phil Born, who is one of our co-founders Another keynote previous day, I think it was Peter Fox, who was another one of our co-founders. So we are life sciences community. And there are interactions even with, I just talked to Bob for a second, with, with Bob and his community, because Larry Smart, for example, is one of our main next new project. Uh, Larry is, you know, major in kind of in computer expert who turned himself into a lab rat, analyzed himself for the last 10 years a lot. It's cultified human, we call it. And um, so um, we're going to talk about that in two months in May meeting, 16, 17 in DC. So you're invited. I mean, just check deltaglobal.org. So the question is how to work specifically, and we are very young. We are one year and four months old. Um, we started conversations and collaborations, for example, with Scott. I'm not sure you know about that, with Internet too. Mike Sullivan, you know, okay, good. Um, and uh, mm, what I would uh, propose mm, to think for you guys, what specifically we can do in near term? Uh, because, you know, right now excitement and psychology on your side, on our side, but we need to turn it into something real. And um, mm, I think RDA has, you know, um, you know, already made some um, kind of initial steps towards making science more effective, and that's fantastic, and I would congratulate Alan from Peter. I'm not going to call all of you guys, but this is it's going to be a major part of your legacy, you know that. So my point is how to, how to, um, this is question, open question, how we can work together and do something specifically now, not in a few years when we figure out all legal and whatever structural issues, okay? Let's do something together. And this, you know, Scott just mentioned your joke, I mean, not joke, about the RDA. Yeah. <laughs> I was flying, um, my flight was, you know, long and I watched a couple movies. One was Avatar. And by, by accident, did you know that Avatar, this bad company, was called RDA? <laughs> so, okay, so this is right, RDA. Maybe Scott is right, you need to put the to differentiate. I'm just, <laughs> seriously, okay? Okay. Uh, comments from the panel? Go ahead, Ross. One of the uh, opportunities we've had this week is working with the uh, co-data folk who have been looking at legal interoperability and trying to understand, first of all, terms. <laughs> what, what is an interest group? What is a working group? Um, uh, in the same way we were having discussions with Mustafa yesterday. Uh, so I think one of the things that's emerging over the last few days is that, yes, we've got a working group approach in place. What's exactly it mean? Does it mean to have an interest group? And what's its status is, is an emerging issue. Uh, we don't have all of the answers, and in my view, we shouldn't have all of the answers. Uh, but we would like to work explicitly on concrete activities that help test the proposition. So your, your offer of concreteness fits very well with, with our desire. So we'll perhaps meet in a little while. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Oh, right. Yeah. First of all, with my Internet 2 hat on, yeah, we think Delsa is great, and we're really glad to be working with you. Second, um, advice on making organizations concrete, things like that. I think, okay, I was asked uh, what mistakes IETF may have made, and it's hard to say because we criticize ourselves all the time. We assume we're making mistakes, so it's hard to say, you know, we're always sincerely trying to better. What I was hoping is that other people, RDA, uh, could look at what we've been doing in IETF and say, oh, 
that's totally bad, and, and we can learn from them, and you know, besides them learning from us. But I think it'd be great if organizations, RDA, DELSA, everybody, could get together and compare notes on governance and help each other become more concrete. Okay. Uh, okay, let's do Chris and then come back to Mark. So it, it, it strikes me that there's a couple of um, things that are all right, try again. It strikes me that there's probably some Venn diagram one could draw of overlapping circles that would represent the relationships between these organizations and a few others like W3C and, and others. And it would be interesting to try to draw that uh, diagram. That would be quite uh, informative. And, and it just strikes me that uh, because of this overlapping nature, the goals that we ha all have in mind for uh, global data infrastructure um, are more easily achieved if we uh, coordinate in some way and, and move in the same direction. That overlapping nature also creates the potential for duplication and orthogonal uh, work that could slow things uh, down. So is there uh, potentially an opportunity for uh, you know, active uh, coordination to have uh, I don't know if it's an exchange of hostages or a, a, a coordination <laughs> uh, group that uh, would meet on a regular basis to try to uh, map out sort of the global strategy for how all of us might uh, contribute in a complementary way to a global uh, data infrastructure, maybe a meeting of the leadership of these groups or, or things like that. You want to take it? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, there's two levels. You know, I, I, as I kind of said, I think there's a, you know, Fran's term, there's a boiling ocean of data, act, potential data activities in all different areas of science. Everybody needs new uh, uh, forms of data management, integration, analysis, so forth, to do their science. So, you know, you're talking hundreds, if not thousands, of possible areas of work, and we've seen samplings of, you know, maybe a couple hundred working groups emerging. I mean, that actually probably won't even cover all the needs. So in terms of grassroots efforts, I mean, uh, I think the likelihood of duplication isn't that high. There are going to be areas where different groups within different sciences or, you know, reach out in different ways and that, those should be coordinated. But, um, you know, if we're really talking about, you know, uh, France flowers and things, I mean, there's just going to be a lot of grassroots stuff. I, I, the other level, though, that I was suggesting is I, I still think there's some strate big strategic issues. There's some issues where the funders need to get their act together. and. Like in uh, the Belmont Forum in the Earth Science area, the funding agencies have gotten together uh, to try to coordinate science funding. And, and, you know, I think there's a data component to that discussion. So I would um, hope that, you know, uh, those kinds of initiatives could be also in the, in the area of collaboration between RDA and Kaveda and uh, WDS and so forth. And if you guys think meeting of leadership is a, uh, Worthwhile, um, yeah, that's good. I mean, we, WDS and CoData have a joint meeting coming up, or overlapping meeting coming up, and uh, we're certainly, I, again, I'm speaking informally, but um, I'm sure they'd be open to that kind of uh, communication. Can I ask a In fact, I, I would like to reinforce the message uh, Bob just um, um, echoed, um, uh, voiced, but um, also add that um, um, I think we can bring together um, uh, the expertise from the different groups and, and, and try and build some, some kind of um, consensus around um, um, directions uh, uh, towards uh, which we could work. Uh, as uh, Bob mentioned, WDS and Coleta have now uh, quite strong uh, collaboration links uh, and, and we ho hope really to, be, to build on that because we're under the same roof, under the ICSU, uh, ICSU umbrella and we, we clearly have some commonalities and, and common objectives. When you started in fact your question, um, it, it made me think of one of the activities we're undergoing, uh, we're, we're taking uh, now in, in the context of WDS, which is the uh, Scalable Knowledge Network. 
And in fact, we have some hope that this activity would develop in, in the future to help us uh, map the, the data management landscape. And uh, maybe this is some kind of activity we could uh, use in the future to identify gaps and, and, and in, in, in this landscape and, and potentially um, find um, solutions and, 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 and directions. So we, we have great hopes and that we could deliver something with, with this tool. I don't think you need such a relationship with the IETF, so I will let them speak. I'll, ju I'll just say, yeah, we do this all the time. You know, one of the keys is liaisons, in addition to summits and trying to have joint meetings. And not hostages, but spies and messengers. <laughs> uh, and um, ideally, people who are going to be at the meeting anyway, so they know both cultures. OK, let's do one more. Uh, Mark? Yeah, this comes from... Uh from the Twitter feed online from Natasa Bilotovic. Um, and it's, it's really more of a specific question, I think, of, of what Chris was saying. It's, it's simply, will you recommend that your members participate in RDA working groups? I think I said it clearly. I think it's directed to all of them. I, th I think um, I mentioned this in, in my presentation clearly, that WDS will certainly, um, as um, a goodwill contributor to RDA uh, promote um, participation of its um, members in uh, RDA activities where, where it's relevant, of course, and where appropriate. I hope I understood the question, Mark. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're different, right? We're, we're not. We're, we're a service organization for you. There are people in the IETF who are familiar with the data, but not very many. And, you know, we deal with the protocols, not the payloads, mostly. And so those who are uh, good on data are already very aware of the RDA. Okay, another question over there. Andy, Andy uh, So this is directed to Mustafa and uh, Bob. So earlier we heard uh, the point that the way to get adoption is to have this crying need, right? That um, solving a problem that has a crying need. You're going to say V6? Excuse me? Are you going to say IPv6? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to deal in this other realm first. But I don't, I don't, I'm not sure IDA wants to take on the IPv6 problem. Um, but um, so the idea of the RDA working group solving a problem in 12 to 18 months, you know, from your, both of your perspectives and the experience that you've had over these years, can you, and first of all, I, I guess the question has two parts. Um, the two working groups that have been formed already are in this idea of criminal identifiers and type registries for identifiers. So are, do those meet this criteria of some crying need that you see out there? And the second question is, are there other things that, from your perspectives, again, you could see working groups that would help your organizations out to solve such problems? Should I just talk first? Yeah. Well, anyway, I, mean, I have both hats, too. I also run a data center. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, we use handles and are trying to figure out how we fit in, uh, in our case, within the NASA network. and more broadly in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think there are needs uh, uh, like that, and, and we certainly, uh, uh, and, and I'm hard to separate what my interests are, and of course, is the, I'm, I think I'm representative of the broader co-data community. There are a lot of people interested in that, you know, I think it's a desperate need related to preservation. Uh, there's a desperate need, uh, as uh, Peter put in originally, uh, Future Earth is trying to be a response to a, you know, set of environmental changes that, you know, we're very late in responding to, and we still don't have the data and information systems in place to really deal with the, um, the decisions that should have been made, you know, 10 years ago, and now still won't be made for another decade, even if we're lucky. So, yeah, I think we're all responding to, to those, um, you know, higher level, pressures, and we may not quite use the word desperate need in the same context, but I think it's probably correct. Um, I think this idea of um, um, desperate need, I think that, that was the term that was used, is, is quite interesting. 
Um, I'm not sure for many of the, the, the challenges we're facing in, in, in the context of scientific data management, there's a desperate need. And this probably explains why the adoption of some solutions is taking some time. So, um, we, just using an example, for example, data publication, um, there is a desperate need for data managers to get recognition and credit for their work. Um, and this is probably a driving force that will make data publication uh, concept move towards an adoption into the community. Uh, we're building on that, clearly. <laughs> so yeah, I, I like the idea of, of, of desperate need and, and I encourage uh, RDA also maybe to, uh, to focus on maybe trying to move ahead on the topics where there's clearly this desperate need <laughs> identified because, yeah, it will accelerate the, uh, the adoption. For the other topics, like Bob um, highlighted, um, we are really struggling because uh, for uh, research programs like Future Earth, um, uh, which is really supposed to address uh, desperate needs of society, <laughs> uh, not desperate needs of scientists, but desperate needs of society. Um, the adoption uh, of, of good strategies for data management and, and, and stuff like that is, is very slow because, yeah, on, 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 the, on, on the other side, the, the desperate need is not probably uh, uh, yet there. So, yeah, there's uh, clearly work um, to be done there. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah, Mustafa said it very well. The, the desperate need is clear, but only to us. We need to get the horse to drink. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do is I want to first thank the panel for their uh, contributions here. Um, so thank you. And, and before I go for break, we're going to have a short uh, interview with Ron on uh, uh, task forces. Let me just sit for a So uh, I won't keep you long uh, from your coffee. Uh, this is really just a short five minutes or less on something that's come up during the conference. Um, we heard about uh, growing pains from Scott and, <laughs> uh, and uh, Bob, and uh, we're going to have to go through some growing pains, I think, in the, in the next uh, few weeks and months uh, in the RDA as we try and establish the organization um, in a way. So, so really, this is a, a sort of course to arms. How, how can you help um, the RDA grow? So, um, they were referred to just now, friends, flowers, uh, infamous. No bridges in this talk, we've got flowers instead. Um, and, and really, how are we going to let the flowers grow? Well, you know, we can just let them uh, see what happens, the, the working groups, the, uh, the members, or now I'm going to call them participants, I think, I, I took that note. Um, uh, but, you know, there's, a, there's a, a savage world out there with very harsh environments, so we might find that we need to build a greenhouse around the flowers to help them grow. Um, this is perhaps the RDA. If we are going to build a greenhouse, then you, you certainly you start needing a ventilation, you need an irrigation system, uh, you might need a drain system, uh, you might need some frost protection, etc. So I think to, max, to let the flowers grow um, as best possible, then we're going to have to build some sort of structure, some things that will, that will make it happen. So the idea that has come up here is, well, there's a lot of work to do that. I mean, if you look at the IETF's documentation, there's a lot of documentation like that. It's necessary, you know, we've got very little, but we want the least possible, but there is a lot of stuff that needs to be done. And equally, there are a lot of people in this room. So, you know, it's just a matter of coordinating the effort in the room. Uh, we've come up with the idea of setting some task forces running to do particular jobs. Uh, the task force will, will uh, be uh, a volunteer effort, of course, like everything else is here. People who can volunteer their expertise and some of their actual time as well to do some work. This is work in establishing RDA as an organization, kind of quite separate from the work of the working groups. Uh, the, the task forces should work in the open as one of our general principles. They should propose options, receive feedback on those options, propose a solution, have that solution reviewed by the membership, the same sort of process, um, so that we can define some of the things we need. Uh, one of the things we need pretty urgently 
is a technical advisory board. I think uh, you probably have seen already what that is. It's a recommendation body that is going to interact with the working groups and make recommendations on technical matters. Uh, the the TAG members need to be chosen for their technical depth and their job is to identify gaps and, and find opportunities. Um, and what we need is a process by which we are going to select the TAB. And we're looking for people who want to be involved, not in the TAB itself, that will come a few weeks down the line, but involved now in defining the process by which we choose the TAB. Um, there is a document on the forums that you can get to through the documents page on the web as well, uh, which has a proposal. Um, it is just a proposal. Uh, the proposal there is that TAB members stand for two years, and every year you re-elect half of the TAB so that there's some overlap, some continuity, but yet you, you change the people all the time. There are many other models that could go forward as well, and we need to have agreement about what the tab is going to be and the process by which we can populate it. And we need to do that really quite urgently now, because there is an urgent need to have a tab. I think that has come as a, as a strong feel from, from, all the, from all the people here, I think. Um, and then, so we need to make, define the process and run the process, and then, you know, let go. So the task force is a short period of time, set this thing up, and then hand it over, and in the steady state, the secretariat will take that over and run it. So we need volunteers for the town election process right now. Um, we also have some other things that we need to do in, in fairly short order. Um, we need to work out our processes for uh, working with affiliate organizations, affiliation with other organizations. We need processes for organizational membership. We also need the, the processes by which we manage the individual membership or participants, perhaps. Uh, what, what does it mean to be a member? Does it just mean you've, you've joined a mailing list? Does whatever. Those processes we don't have at the moment is completely open. We'll probably stay open, but I think we need to write something down about that. Uh, we'll probably need some RDA policy statements as well. Uh, what is RDA's policy on data protection, freedom of information, and patents on uh, intellectual property generated by the RDA activities itself? All, and there are many, many other things too. So all these things have to be done over the next months. Some of them are more urgent than others. So really, um, on the, on, in the lobby outside, uh, there are two sheets of paper uh, posted on the notice board where the working group uh, membership uh, lists were. Um, please sign up. Please sign up on one of two sheets. There's one sheet which says, I want to be involved in defining the process for the TOB election. And there's another sheet which says, I just want to volunteer to help uh, the RDA grow in this way. On the other sheet, you can suggest uh, just put your name down if you want to help, or you can put your name down with a specific role that you think you want to participate in. Um, if anybody, for those watching on the web, um, there's also a forum topic now. It's called something like Task Force Discussion discussion or something like that, where you can sign up on the forum as well. So thank you very much and uh, you can have your coffee now.